So I grew up, or spent my younger years, I guess I'm still growing up, um, <laughs> on a small farm up in Sonoma County. And I played in the creeks and caught frogs and watched birds and grew really close to nature. Later, as I grew older, I moved south to Moran County, and I learned more and more about climate change as I went through school. I even got to experience some of climate change's effects myself. For instance, last summer, while climbing in British Columbia, my team and I happened upon this valley, which according to our map that was only made 30 years ago, was supposed to have 200 feet of glacial ice. But as you can see, it's completely barren. Due to these things, I decided that I really needed to do something for climate change. Yet, because of my position as a student, I felt that there was really not very much I could do. I was incredibly, incredibly frustrated because I didn't have quite enough knowledge to do anything substantial, yet I cared just as much as anybody else. I had always been interested in biomimicry. It seems like such a wonderful way to try to find sustainable solutions. So when I heard about the Biomimicry Youth Design Challenge, I realized that it would be a really great thing to do at my high school. So I found a faculty advisor and several other students who were also interested in helping to do something for climate change but didn't know about biomimicry, and we began looking for different ways that we could help use biomimicry to limit climate change. We decided to target tidal energy, capturing electricity from the ocean's currents, and we began to research tidal kites. Now, a tidal kite is just like a kite that's in the air, except for that instead of being blown by the wind, it's blown by the current. Now, Tidal kites are advantageous over a stationary turbine because unlike a turbine which can't move through the water, it's limited by the current flow going past it. A tidal kite can move through the current as horizontally as well as um, with the current's direction. This means that they can generate several times more electricity and are very helpful for areas with low current velocities such as the San Francisco Bay. Unfortunately though, current tidal kites have several very large issues, particularly when it comes to their control and stabilization systems. They have flaps and rudders that help steer the kite through the water, yet those systems break a lot, and they mean that the kites have to be serviced frequently, and that's overall reduced their ability to be used across the world. We begin to look for ways that nature flies through fluids without any active controls. First, we looked at Valela Valela, which is the organism on the left there. It's related to the Portuguese man of war jellyfish, and due to that little fin that it has on its top, it moves like a sailboat across the ocean's surface. Unfortunately, though, although that's a really great method of moving across two fluids, it does require the boundary between the ocean's water and the wind in order to move. Next, we looked at sycamore samara, the seeds that helicopter down from trees. But we realized that their helicoptering motion, although a wonderful way to limit their flight speed, was not quite ideal to harness the full potential of the ocean's currents. That led us to Alsomatra macocarpa, this seed, which grows on vines that climb high to the top of rainforest trees before being released and flying up to a kilometer before landing on the ground. This really unique flight is due to characteristics such as swept back wings, curved wingtips, and a unique position of the center of flight in relation to the center of mass. The seed spirals as it goes down due to small asymmetries in the two wings. Seeds with broader wings fly in a straighter path, while seeds with more asymmetric wings fly in a spiraled path, and these differences in wing symmetry mean that the seeds have a very large range of dispersion. Using the seed, we designed this model, which as you can see has the same swept back wings and a bunch of other characteristics that are harder to tell, but are there and allow it to have a very stable flight through the water. We then printed out this model and built a small rudimentary generator using a spool and a motor that we ran backwards in order to produce a current and we were able to generate about 16 watts of electricity doing basic tests in a pool. With this design, we were actually able to win the Biomimicry Youth Design Challenge, which is really surprising and wonderful. Um, and, and part of that was $1,000 for further research. This year, our goal is to figure out the exact ratio between wing symmetry that will allow for the most efficient energy generation. In order to do this, we're currently building a large test rig that we can place in a pool um, to get a, sta a standardized measurement of current speed. Our hope is that although our design may not be something that can be used to generate electricity, perhaps either in the future we or other organizations might be able to use the ideas that we're generating in order to bring tidal kites across the world. Thank you. Thank you.